Now, we've seen how to scale the vertical axis for the sine function. We want to see how to scale the horizontal axis. Well, as an example, we're going to regard the horizontal axis now as the t axis. And we're going to consider t to be clock time. Time reading on a clock that starts at zero here at the origin. Origin corresponds to time zero and time increases as we move to the right along the t-axis. Now that would correspond to motion around a circle. But now the motion is occurring in time. Okay, well, furthermore, regarding this now as the t-axis, we're going to say that this cycle lasts for one second. So the t goes from zero to one second during a complete cycle. How are we going to write the function corresponding to this model? Okay, we can't use y equals sine of theta. Well, we can if we let theta equal the right thing. Um, but we can't let y just equal the sine of t, let's say, because the phase change during a complete cycle has to be 2 pi. In other words, you have to go all the way around the circle in a complete cycle. So how's that going to how's that going to happen? Well, we summarize our situation by saying the phase has to change by two pi, and let's say two pi radians. Although down here I write two pi, it's understood that means two pi radians, as we've discussed many times now. Phase must change by two pi radians during a cycle. So the phase has to change by 2 pi, or if you prefer 2 pi radians, when t changes by 1 second. Because you know, we have a phase change of 2 pi radians, we have a change in t of 1 second. Okay, so how are we going to accomplish that? Well, we need a different expression for our phase. Here the phase was just the angle theta. On the, on the original model, uh, where theta equals 2 pi at this point. Now what's the phase going to equal? It's not going to equal theta, it's not going to equal t, but it's got to equal something that changes by 2 pi radians when t changes by 1 second. See if you can write an expression that would do that. Now you should pa have paused and done that, but maybe you have no clue, maybe you just don't have time to think about it. I'll tell you, and then if you haven't already thought about it, you really do need to think about it. The phase is going to be 2 pi multiplied by t, but there's something I've got to add because t has units of seconds and 2 pi has, man, you, we don't really have to write the unit radian down there, but we're going to have to get units straight. So. First of all, understand that if t changes by one second, then 2 pi times t is going to change by 2 pi. That's exactly what we want. We want the phase to change by 2 pi as we complete a cycle. Okay, now I want to put units into this that will match up with the units we've specified, at least implicitly, for t. The fact that t equals one second when we've completed the... Uh, complete cycle phase of 2 pi radians. Uh, so t is going to have, at this point, a unit of 1 second. If we multiply 2 pi radians by 1 second, we get 2 pi radian seconds, and we don't want that. So we want to have a second in the denominator, I'll just abbreviate that with an s, and the 2 pi is actually in radians, I didn't leave myself enough room to write that nicely, but we understand that this, this, this is radians that I've written down here. 2 pi radians over seconds times t. Okay? So now we can write our function. For the unit circle,
graph, y equals just 1 times the sine of the phase, which is the sine of I haven't left myself enough room, have I? I'm just going to have to kind of continue it down here. Two pi radians per second times t. I'll write that a little better out here. Okay, now that would correspond to our red graph. Again, we see that as t goes from 0 to 1 second, the 2 pi radians per second times t goes from 0 to 2 pi radians, completing a cycle, completing a turn, complete revolution around the unit circle, so that the angle completes the an angle of 2 pi. Now that's a lot to sort out, but you need to think about it, you need to apply this until it becomes perfectly natural. Then you'll understand the sine function. Okay, so, uh, now the question is, what's the, uh, equation for this function? Okay, for the wider, uh, or the, the, the higher of the uh, two white graphs here, okay? Well, you should have stopped and thought about that. You should have an opinion, and I expect that you probably got it right. It's got to be 1.7 times the sine of 2 pi radians per second times t. Now, I'll bet you can write the one for this so while I'm writing it, you think it through. Don't have a lot of room to write this, so I'm going to spread it out on two lines. 0.5 times what? Times the same function. And that's going to be the function that corresponds to the white graph of lesser amplitude. All three of these functions have the same sine function. They just have different numbers in front of the sine function. The one point, the sine, the values of the sine, just the plain old sine, have to go from negative one to one because the sine is constructed on a unit circle. If you have a number in front of the sine, that means you're basically constructing the sine function on a bigger circle. But now that we've defined our angle, it's the same for every circle. So here's our angle, here's our angle, here's our angle, or our phase if you prefer, the phase of our motion around the circle. We multiply that by this number which we call the amplitude. Now we don't write the number here but it's implicitly 1, right? 1 times the sine. Uh, so amplitude 1.7, amplitude 1, amplitude 0.5. Three different sine functions. Okay, that's how we scale our x-axis. Now there are many other possible applications. Um, this, incidentally, could represent the motion of a pendulum that has a period of one second. 
and our amplitude, our number in front of the sign, could represent how far the pendulum goes to the right or left of the equilibrium position. It might be 1.7 inches, or 1 inch, or 0.5 inches, okay? That might be in centimeters, might be in any of a number of units. Now, one second pendulum is only 25 centimeters long, so uh, we don't want to make it too big if it's going to be, uh, well, we don't want to make the amplitude very big compared to the length of the pendulum. But uh, that's a different subject, okay? That's one interpretation of this model. 